So now we're going to add a layer. And we're going to go ahead and trace out the face. Because what I want to do here is I want to isolate the face. And this is the first step in, in the colorization process. So you get yourself a good cutout of the different parts. So I'm going to do the face and then I'm going to do the jacket and the shirt and the undershirt, the hair and the, the backdrop. So once you have your figure all cut, it, all cut out, go ahead and hit copy and paste at the, the bottom and it will create uh, another layer. Um, and one thing you want to make sure is that when you're cutting out the figure that you use the original picture. If you don't, you're going to have a blank layer. So here we have the selection and it says from selection when I did a copy and paste. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill this layer after I put on alpha lock, I'm going to fill the layer to really light green. So I have my light green, I hit fill layer. So now it just fills the layer, which is the face. Now I go to the color option on the layer and you can reduce the opacity at this time as well, but you can see the difference when you take it off, it looks like the normal picture and then you add the, the color to it and it turns green. Now we're gonna do the next part. Make sure that you select the original photo uh, once again, if you do not, then you're only going to be selecting the layer that you just previously did. And it's not what you're going to be looking for. Don't have to be precise here, but the harder work that you put forth in, uh, early on, the less work you have to do later on. Uh, if you try to just cut out the entire head. Now you got to deal with colorizing the face and then separating from the hair. So it's easier just to take the distinct parts and make those as I call them shapes, honestly, because that's what we're going to do. So once you have your area selected, go ahead and put, hit copy and paste. That brings a from selection layer pops up, which is the hair. Go ahead and alpha lock it. And then you can fill this layer to that same green color. Then you can go ahead and change that to the color option on the layer. Mess with the opacity at this time if you want. You really don't need to do that right now. And then now you want to go back and select the original picture. Now we're going to do the jacket. Same step same steps as we did last time you're just looking at getting that that main object that main shape um, with the jacket one of the nice things that you can do is since it's in two parts is you can actually go ahead and get the shape that's on the left and then once I get to the edge of the picture I can kind of do whatever I want because it's not going to cut anything just makes it easier then loop it all the way around okay and now if you go ahead and go to the other side and do the same process don't hit the copy paste or anything like that just go ahead and just pretend like you're continuing to do the to the cutting out same type of thing loop it all the way around and then try to find where the shape starts up again so once you have both of those images, hit copy and paste, and that should give you what you're looking for as far as the jacket. There it is. That looks good. Go back and oh, I'm sorry, go ahead and uh, you can alpha lock it. Um, with the alpha lock on, then you go ahead and you can select the color and fill that layer. I'm sure some of you have probably done this numerous ways, but you don't technically have to use alpha lock uh, because it is just looking at that, that layer, that selection. Uh, I just do it just, it's just a habit that I do. Okay. So we've got the jacket, we've got the face, we've got the hair. Now we still need to get the shirt and then the undershirt 
and then the backdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and, and speed up this process just because you guys are, are familiar with how to do it. But we're going to do the go ahead and do, do the backdrop. OK, so we're filling in this last uh, layer, the undershirt with a bright green color. Make sure that all the layers have the color option on them because uh, once you have the color option, then you can start looking at using the gradient tool. So the gradient tool is probably the best tool to use to colorize your photos. Um, what I did here was I took, since this is my grandfather, I took a section of, of my, my skin. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I want to make a palette of all the colors that are the, of my skin tone. Uh, so I usually like to create a new palette and then looking at all the different sections of this, the lightest to the darkest, I'm going to create a palette. One thing when you're making a gradient map is you want to make sure that you have, I would say at least four good colors, solid colors where you have both light and dark. The more you have, especially with more um, high definition photos, the more you can can get as far as the skin tone uh, and it makes it a lot easier to do this project. So I usually do four to six uh, in this case, just depends on, on the range of colors and, and the brightness that I can get and darkness, and the shadows and, and, the, and the brightness. Uh, so yeah, that's the big thing is just making sure you have the appropriate contrast. So you can see here, I got a pretty dark uh, starting color and it's gonna get fairly light once you have that palette, you can then uh, you can then create your gradient map. If you feel like you need additional colors, you can always, especially the lighter colors, the darker colors, you can always include your own colors. Okay, once you have your palette all set up, go ahead and click on the the um, magic wand and click gradient map layer. The way that you create a gradient map is you want to select the portion of the gradient map where you want the, the color you're looking for, and then you can open up the palettes there. Now I click on the gradient again, and it gives me an, another option, and I can do it again, and you can change the colors as they drastically or gradually, sorry, gradually get lighter. And then once you have your color set, you can see whites at the very end. That's like a pure white. I can change that. I can make that the lightest color I have on my palette. It doesn't have to be white. But once you have this, then you can actually move these squares around. You can also label your gradient map. You can name it. So I'm just gonna call this skin. So then I just take out that selection, I don't need it, and I go back to the face. And now with it colorized, I can go in, hit the magic wand, select gradient map, and then boom, there's the skin. Now, like I said, this isn't, this isn't the final product, but this is a really good way to start. And then from there, you can actually work with the highlights, the saturation, change things the way that you want it. But this is a really good starting point for colorizing your photos. Obviously, I'm gonna have to change the eyes, add more to the eyebrows, do a little bit of highlights and shadows, um, but now I have a starting point and it's not green. Now, within the gradient map, I can adjust these squares. So you can see it's changing the color a little bit. And the other thing you can do is like, ooh, there's just way too many colors in here. You can delete that. Um, the other thing you can do is once you have your gradient map is you can now you can look at the curves and change the curves. And what I love about the gradient map and the colorization aspect is that it's a good starting point and then you can make your adjustments as needed. So you, if you don't like that gradient map, you don't have to stick to it. But to me, it just gives me a good starting base, a good foundation. Uh, you could always just go from the green to the curve map and try to find the colors there. Uh, to me, I think that might be a little more difficult, um, but I know people that, that do that as well. I decided to go ahead and work on the jacket. And I think the reason why is because I'm trying to find a good brown for this jacket. I think I, I know what I want through, through color balance. You could actually do it here. 
I don't recommend this because I'm looking for a specific color and I did see in my uh, gradient map there was there was a brown that I could potentially use so that's what I'm going to do not a purple there we go so this to me is a little bit more of a brown leather base that I can start with And you can make as many of these gradients as you want. The, it's, it is a very useful tool. You can change the colors. Uh, to me, it just, it works. So for the hair, I kind of see what I have with the, the jacket. I might want to do the same thing with the hair. So I'll go ahead and I turn it on. Nice green hair there. Sorry, Grandpa. And then I hit gradient map. And you can start seeing definitely the anomalies that are there, right? There's some, there's some gaps between the face and the hair. So those are things that I'm going to need to go back and change. Um, but I'm just using the gradient map that was already set forth, this brown one that was there at default. And I can just change the hair a little bit here and there. And once it's at a place where I think I could work from, I'll use a select that. So now I've got the face. I've got the hair, I've got the jacket. So let's do the background. I'm guessing what this background is. Uh, let's see, maybe like a light blue or something like that. Definitely not a brown. There's a blue, ooh, there's a light gradient right there. Light blue gradient right there. Maybe I can use that. Mm, no, a little too light, a little too blue. But what I can do is I can say, hey, you know what? I do like this blue, but maybe if I change the gray a little bit, not a whole lot of options there. But if I add another block, it gives me a little more control. And so you can kind of mess around with these gradient maps. I'm kind of, I know I'm beating a dead horse here. Uh, I just find the gradient map to be a very useful tool for doing this. So I'm actually taking a different approach. I'm just gonna color pick and then drop a color in there. It seems to work with the colorize option. You can do that. And that's one thing I wanna make sure everyone understands is that you have to have the color option on your layer. If you have it as normal, it's just going to be a solid light blue or a solid peach or, or solid brown. So for the shirt, the undershirt, obviously I want a white undershirt. Um, I don't want it green. <laughs> so the best option here is to use the saturation because then you can just take all the color out and then it becomes a white shirt, which sounds pretty easy. Now for this shirt, the actual shirt that's underneath the jacket, I've did a little bit of research and what guys wore back in the late 40s, early 50s. And there's a green color that I really like, so I think I'm just going to stick with that. And then, like I said, look, you can easily see this. There's the jacket, there's the shirt. Part of the jacket, I'm sorry, sorry, part of the shirt, it looks like is colored. Um, and it should be the jacket. So I'm just going to go back in and fix this. And the way that I do that is I can either do it in the layer of the shirt or the layer of, of the jacket. With shadows and things of that nature, this is actually not too hard um, because the one thing you just have to keep in mind is that with the colorized layer, it may be a, a, it, you may not get the color that you want, right? So that's one thing to take into consideration. 
of making sure that you do the job right the first time is if you are precise and you do it right the first time, you don't have to go back and do these types of things. But I definitely do see some anomalies um, with how I cut things out, which that's fine. I'll just have to go back and, and fix those. And, and really that's it for this first part. Um, just the basic getting those color layers. Um, and then so in the next videos, we'll look at how we can modify those color layers and make this look a little more realistic and uh, a lot nicer. Thank you once again for watching this and uh, look forward to the next one.